So no, I suppose farmers try to manage their grass as best as possible. Um, farmers try paddocks that have, I suppose, a lot of stem and stuff. We try to cut them out for surplus bales rather than topping. But topping too early is obviously a waste of time as well because that seed isn't developing enough. Yeah, um, it's the, the timing of the topping or the timing of the mowing is important. What you'll find is a lot of people, even in early to mid-May, if there's a bit of a surplus and they don't get the residual low enough, they'll, de they'll then decide to go in and, and top it or, or, to, or, or mow it. But at that time of the year, in early May, early to mid-May, especially if you're using late heading varieties, um, this, the developing seed head will still be below the cutting height. Well, even though you might be cutting as low as possible, it'll still be below that. And so effectively, it would be a waste of time to do it so early. So the, the trick would be, again, you, you can actually tell where the, at any point in time where the seed head is, wherever there's a node, wherever there's a node like in this particular tiller here, I can feel that there's a bulge there, okay? And there's no bulge above it. Okay, there's another one there, I can just barely feel it. So I know now that the seed head must be above that last, that highest node, okay? So again, if you cut below that, you'll remove it. And you can do that as well in, um, in May as well to see how low you need, how low or where the developing seed head is, okay? The trick would be to be patient and wait till the next rotation to go in with the mower or to go in, again, I, again, I prefer not a topper because they don't go low enough wait till you go in, wait till the next rotation to go in with the mower to cut that, to cut low. And then you have it sorted in, at one sitting, okay? Okay, so we've already mentioned about the importance of getting a low residual for, to try to re reduce the amount of reproductive tillers in the sward. And so here we have a kind of a very good example of the cows actually creating, or, or uh, actually having a big influence on sending that sward back to being vegetative. So this is a paddock that's about to be grazed. Now I think cows are about to come in here this evening. Um, and what's interesting here is that from on the, on the right up here, there's one particular variety. And if you can pan across there to the left and just to the left of where Stephen is, there's another variety. So the one on the left is a tetraploid and the one on the right is a diploid. And since this was sown last year, every time the cows are grazing the tetraploid to a lower residual, okay? Whereas they're leaving a higher residual on the on the um, on the on the dip light up here, and consequently, then the amount of reproductive tillers that we see in the tetraploid now in this May June July period is a hell of a lot less than what we're seeing on on the right in the dip light. And I think I can say without uh, for sure is that if you were to do a chemical analysis on on the sward on the left, you know it would have a higher leaf to stem ratio, it would have a higher organic matter digestibility, and it would have a higher crude protein compared to the variety on the right. And of course then you would expect to get higher cow performance on, on the variety on the left because of that, okay? So again, it's, a, it's a, just an example of it where the cows graze low, um, they're happy to graze low the next time again. And all that helps to improve the sward characteristics and the uh, chemical analysis from the sward then. And ultimately it help, helps the cow performance as well. We've already mentioned above that when you remove the seed head, the remaining bit of the tiller that's left in the sward that was holding the seed head, that dies, okay? And kind of if you zoom down on the ground here, what you can kind of see is that there's a lot of, a lot of this dead material that's now rising up to the top of the, you know, it's, it's coming through um, in the sward. And this is a phenomenon that, you, that you'll see at this time of the year, kind of from mid-July onwards into August, into early September. And I suppose to try to explain it is that, again, just to use some of these bunches of tillers here, is that this is a tiller that was alive probably a month ago. Again, this is the one that had the reproductive tiller, it, that this was the reproductive tiller. The seed head would have been above it. You, you graze it off or you cut it off and the butt dies. This then would have been the daughter tiller at the base of the sward okay that within would have been allowed to grow on but because um, sometimes what happens is that is that again because this tiller is dying or has died the root structure is weakened a little bit and what happens then is that when the cows the next time are in the next rotation again when they come to graze it the root structure is weakened and just as part of the grazing process 
it's grazed out it just comes out of the soil and um, it, it just sits there on the surface and dies and this is part of the natural cycle of how perennial ryegrass grows and how it rejuvenates itself then because where this is pulled out of the ground it has left space and light get down to other younger tillers and tillers that are not not going to be pulled out of the ground and once that light gets to the base of the sward new daughter tillers then spring up again okay and the cycle begins again so it's nothing to worry about when you see that a lot of that uh, dead material in that kind of late July August period is part of the natural cycle of moving from uh, again from reproductive to vegetative.